Welcome to another movie plot. Spoilers ahead. A word of warning from local radio DJ Harlan Griffith. Having moved to the quiet mining town of Prosperity to preach his extraterrestrial conspiracy theories from his trailer. One evening while hauling barrels of toxic waste, a distracted truck driver swerves to avoid hitting a rabbit, instead causing a barrel of chemicals to fall off the back of his truck and into Prosperity's water reservoir. Some time later, an exotic spider farmer named Joshua has been making regular visits to the site to collect crickets for his spider food, oblivious to the hazardous chemicals being absorbed by the crickets. A budding young arachnophile visits Joshua to view his collection of critters. Mike Parker gets spooked by a jumping tarantula before bumping into Josh. Having been visiting the lonely hermit once a week to watch the spiders grow, the two have become close friends. Noticing the spiders increasing in size at a faster than usual rate, Joshua shows off the crickets that have been making his trapdoor spiders act hungrier than usual, and his jumping spiders more aggressive. While taking the tour, a tarantula escapes from its enclosure and sneaks its way onto Joshua's back. The final he shows Mike are the male orb weavers, bringing live prey to their den to feed the three times larger female Consuela. After Mike is called home by his mother, Joshua gets excited to show him next week's progress, when realizing that the tarantula has escaped. He is suddenly bitten and accidentally begins knocking down the cages in his panic, collapsing into a terrarium and being devoured by the swarming spiders, who also eat his bird. A week later Mike is going back to Joshua's to check on him when he comes across the contaminated pond being cleaned out by Deputy Pete Willis, and Sheriff and Mike's mother Samantha Parker. Sam mentions that the pond is contaminated so Mike tries to warn Joshua, but is grounded by his mother who previously told him never to go see that weirdo. While driving her son home, Sam pulls over a group of kids riding their dirt bikes dangerously. Using it as an excuse to get her daughter Ashley away from her reckless boyfriend Brett. When the whole family is back home, Mike cuts his sister's time short on the phone to contact Joshua, who doesn't answer as the spiders are shown to have grown to such large proportions that they can now consume humans. Arriving back in prosperity is Chris McCormick, whose father owned the town's mines before his unfortunate death and the gold ran dry. He is greeted upon his return by Aunt Gladys still barely managing to keep the family business afloat. Chris drives down to the town's half-abandoned prosperity mall, where the money-hungry Mayor Wade is holding a town meeting, talking about whether they should sell the mines to the government and relocate the town. With Harlan insisting it's a government cover-up, and Leon, believing a rumor that Chris's dad had found a load of gold deep within the mine before his death. Most of the locals assume selling is just another one of the mayor's get-rich-quick schemes like this empty mall, or his ostrich farm. Even Chris, who still owns the lands that the mines are located on and refuses to sell them. Wade tries to persuade him saying that his father was delusional due to the high levels of methane underground. So he gets whacked for it. Causing Sam to mediate the situation, having known Chris since he broke her ex-husband's nose 10 years prior. Deputy Pete leaves after a wild night in prosperity and continues his home renovations into the night, when his cat Zeke spots an intruder and chases it into the walls. When his wife Emma notices the cat missing, she is almost bit by a rather large spider while grappling a tin of tuna to bait the kitty out. Tuna. Suddenly the cat face plants against the inside of the wall, and Zeke and the spider begin an epic battle between feline and arachnid, making their way up the wall and across the ceiling, finishing when Zeke is electrocuted by the light. The next morning Gladys helps Chris realize that he should tell Sam that he likes her, and that he should tell her that he broke her husband's nose because he caught him cheating. So he goes to her house, where Mike is sneaking out to go see Joshua, and Ashley is receiving a taser from her mom before going to see Brett. Chris awkwardly asks Samantha out, stumbling on his words but getting a date in the end. Mike reaches Joshua's on foot for the first time in just over a week and finds the place overrun with cobwebs, but no signs of Joshua or any of the spiders. He discovers that the spiders have escaped into the mines out back of the farm, and sees that the spiders have grown to enormous size. Chris starts the mines up again hoping that his father's vision of the gold wasn't just a hallucination. But as soon as he leaves the problems begin, when Leon tries to clear a blockage from one of the hoses and gets a mouthful of spiders. He briefly sees a clan of crawlers that have made the mines their home before he is eaten. While Chris is driving back home he picks up a hitchhiking Mike, who goes on to tell him that the spiders have grown to enormous sizes based on the spider leg he found, though naturally the adult disbelieves the child's story and just assumes the leg is a dried up old cactus. Where were you? Being caught sneaking back inside by his mother, Mike tries to tell Sam of the eight-legged invasion but she just chalks it up to television and grounds him longer. In the morning Harlan starts broadcasting his theory that the various missing pets around town have been abducted by aliens, though he goes off on a tangent and it gets dismissed as the product of a deranged imagination. But not by Gladys, who tells Chris that she finds Harlan very informative, but struggles to even light a match. 
at Wade's thriving ostrich farm. His neglected stepson Brett goes out for the night, while some of the ostriches begin to get devoured. When Wade goes to check on the cause of the commotion he is stalked by a group of trapdoor spiders, but they just snatch the birds up and leave him alone. Down at the motocross track Brett begins to get a bit too fresh with Ashley, so she breaks up with him while breaking in her new taser, then steals his truck. As soon as she does though, jumping spiders show up, and Brett tries to warn his motorcycle buddies but it's too late. The dozen or so riders are chased down by the spiders and taken out one by one, leaving Brett the only survivor. He cuts the spiders off with a fuel truck, blowing it up and no doubt killing the driver, but also accidentally taking down the city's telephone line. Though his success is overshadowed by the fact that Joshua had hundreds of these little suckers. Thankfully Brett crashes into the entrance of one of the mine shafts, trapping the creatures outside but him in. After going deeper into the mines he comes across all the wrapped up victims of the orb weavers, and gets a good peek at the giant Consuela during dinner. Gladys's dog Bruiser tries to protect his home from one sneaking into the basement, but is quickly snatched up. So when mom discovers him missing she wastes no time in arming herself and going into the mines after her baby. But Gladys is soon taken by a male orb weaver herself and wrapped up as a gift for Consuela. When Chris arrives shortly after and goes into the hole looking for Aunt Gladys, he comes across a giant spider's leg and does the right thing and runs. He goes straight to the only one who knows anything on the situation, but Sam's convinced the two are delusional when shown the size that they suggest the spider was. Ashley is in the next room and has a giant male orb weaver enter her bedroom, and tries to abduct her for Consuela. The rest of the house are alerted by her screams, and Sam's skepticism fades as she witnesses the eight-legged freak for herself, so she retrieves one of her work tools and saves both her daughter and Chris, having by now both been webbed on. Seeing as the entire town is connected in some way to the mines, spiders start showing up all over the town and devour the locals. Sam calls Pete and tells him to bring all the guns in the police station to her place, but he is followed by some jumpers. Mike comes up with the idea to go to Harlan's trailer and broadcast a warning to the townspeople, but Pete arrives having brought the jumpers, and the family have to shoot their way out. They speed over to the radio station and barge in on Harlan during dinner. Sam broadcasts over the radio that everyone will be safe at the mall due to the concrete walls and steel doors, but the townspeople think that it's just another one of Harlan's conspiracies. Just then a tarantula having followed them from the city assaults the trailer by flipping it over, with Pete's bullets doing nothing to the heavy load. Luckily the tank falls on its back and the group are able to get into Pete's vehicle and escape, bringing the chaos back to the city where the unaware country folk are soon made aware. As the town is besieged by vicious spider hordes, the people of the diner are all killed and eaten by trapdoor spiders in the parking lot, with Mark being the only one that escapes. As the whole town speeds toward the town mall, Chris tries to convince Harlan that the spiders are from Earth, but ends up just telling him that they are spiders from Mars to make him happy. Wade is finishing up his ostrich burger when people begin to flood into the mall, believing that it's for the sales, he notices the Iraq attack heading their way and retreats back inside. Norman struggles with realizing what's going on, then struggles with getting the mall's gates closed, as Pete and Sam hold the spiders off while as many townspeople as possible barricade themselves inside. One poor soul is beaten to death by a spider. But Chris gets the gate closed as the rest of the main cast make it inside. After a few hours they begin arguing amongst themselves as to the origins, so Mike breaks it down to them. Chris volunteers to climb the radio tower on the roof to try get a signal with Wade's phone, so Harlan volunteers to back him up, wanting to kill a few alien spiders himself. The townspeople arm themselves with whatever they can find in the mall, and Mike gives Chris some perfume in hopes that it will confuse the spider's senses. The duo climb onto the roof and see the massive tarantula hit the front gate like a battering ram. Chris ascends the radio mast, followed by Harlan once the spiders notice them, and tries to get a message across to police that they are being attacked by giant spiders but are just believed to be pranksters. While all this is happening, the cowardly Wade flees into the mines and locks the gate behind him before the coming attack. The tarantula finally breaks open the mall entrance and lets hundreds of smaller spiders do the rest of the work. The townspeople all retreat into the basement while trying to call the enemy numbers, enduring significant losses by the swarm in the process, while also getting cut off from Pete who stays above. The deputy is almost trapped from all sides but luckily finds a gate open and makes it through, coming close to being pulled back but using a chainsaw to free himself. The two on the radio tower are almost overrun, so Harlan tells Chris to defend the human race and heroically jumps into the swarm below, but he makes it past them all and jumps from the roof into some bushes, right next to Pete. Chris uses his jacket to slide down a cable into a vent leading into the mall, meeting up with Sam where they head down to the dead-end basement with the rest of the survivors. 
Meanwhile Brett is still lost in the mines and comes across the cowardly Wade trying to flee, but before they can get away from the spiders on Brett's bike Wade is abducted. So using a forklift Brett breaks down the locked door into the storeroom, and the townsfolk light his pursuers up. They all flee into the mines, where Chris follows some wires to lead the group to a generator on the surface. Norman wanders ahead of everybody and gets taken by a spider, while the methane-filled tunnels rendering their guns useless requires Sam to have to use Mark's crossbow. They come across the thick webbed walls of the female orb weaver's den and find Wade still alive, so I suppose they should free him. Chris tells Sam to take everyone to the surface while he goes to look for his aunt Gladys in the mines, smashing a light bulb on his way. Sam kisses Chris and he takes Brett's dirt bike deeper into the mines. After scanning through some dried up corpses with no luck, he eventually finds her still alive, and the gold that his father found just before his death. The tarantula breaks through into the mall basement and the mines begin to flood with all the spiders Joseph owned, just as Chris and Gladys are confronted by the gigantic Consuela. Without the use of his gun Chris uses the perfume from Mike to mess with the spider's senses, confusing it enough to escape on the motorcycle. Utilizing Gladys's matches and a jolt from Ashley's taser on the surface, the team get a spark from the lights causing the methane to explode in the mines, right as the swarm of spiders and Consuela converge on Chris. The explosion reaches them burning Consuela and all the other spiders trapped behind her, while Chris and Gladys make it out in time. Wade watches on as his beloved mall is reduced to rubble, while the police arrive just in the nick of time. With Harlan leading the charge the police are under the impression that the assailants are aliens, but Pete tells them that they just grew bigger due to the toxic waste, revealing the new hair growth on his bald head to prove it. Brand new. With everything back to normal, Harlan broadcasts about the whole town covering up the incident knowing that no one would believe him anyway, and smiles to reveal that Chris reopened the mines. And the movie ends. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.